Wheels of Destruction is best described as Unreal Tournament with cars. Sounds awesome, right? Well, with five car classes, collectible power-ups, jump pads, teleporters and large arena-style levels, it should be. But sadly, it isn't. In fact, the overall experience I had when playing came nowhere close to awesome. It was instead decidedly mediocre, bordering on the frustrating. This PSN exclusive downloadable slice of car based combat has all the right ingredients present for an exciting multiplayer mashup, and the developers have captured that arena shooter feel down to a T. The cars even have the ability to jump at the press of a button, and bouncing around the low gravity multi leveled environments really has that distinct Quake Online feel to it. On paper, mixing the worlds of arena shooter and racer together sounds like a pretty badass idea, and certainly this game could have been a great addition to any gamer's digital library of games. But for some unknown reason, the control scheme is utter pig shit. For the first five hours or so of play, you'll be slamming into walls, missing turns, turning too far, and just generally getting disoriented and confused as you wrestle with what can only be described as one of the most annoying control setups ever. You know how trapped wasps smack their little waspy faces into windows as they try to fly through the glass? Well, that's a bit like how your first few matches on WAD will feel. What makes it even more annoying is that there are no options to change it. In the menus you can only swap the attack and accelerate buttons, which is a completely useless option. It's almost like the developers, testers and publishers either somehow didn't notice, or they thought their control method was so good that it would be an insult to change it. Which is insane. So what's so bad about them their controls then? Well, imagine if you can how the Warthog is driven in Halo. You use the left thumbstick to point the camera in a certain direction, and the car turns to follow that. That's how the cars control here, but whereas in Halo all that the left stick controlled was the Warthog, here for some reason the same stick is also used to aim your roof mounted weapons, and this is where the problems really begin. The camera moves fast so the turret can follow your speedy enemies, but the car turns slow, meaning the screen turns faster than your vehicle. Because of this you are never really completely sure where your car will be facing, and you will often understeer and then oversteer to try and compensate. This also makes reversing accurately pretty much impossible, and a massively aggravating experience, and can make successful driving and attacking an impossibility during your first few hours or so of play. Yes, you do slowly get used to it, and once you get to grips with using the handbrake as well, you can start to pull off some impressive attacks, stopping and turning on a dime as you pass your enemies, and explodifying them with your mounted weapons. With a downloadable game like this though, you really want it to be a pick up and play experience, and fighting with the controls is only going to make people turn the thing off five minutes into playing the demo. Anywho, there's got to be more to the game than just the lame-o controls, and if you were paying attention in my opening spiel, you will notice I mentioned that there were five unique car classes, each with differing abilities. So the Heavy will last a long time in large battles with its maximum armour and shields, while something like the Scout with its high top speed would be best for hit and run attacks in capture the flag games. Although it's a great addition to the gameplay that each car has these different aspects, the low gravity and light handling makes all the vehicles feel quite floaty and not really anything like the bulky war machines they should be. In fact, a lot of the time direct hits from enemy weapons will send you soaring into the air with all the weight and speed of a half deflated beach ball. It's the sort of physics that would be better suited in a game about plastic remote control cars rather than Mad Max inspired death wagons. With a single player mode which is your basic bot match fare, and only worth playing to learn the layouts of each of the five large levels, the game is best enjoyed online only. However, with only three game modes available, deathmatch, team deathmatch and capture the flag, the whole experience feels a bit hollow. Still, with a full match of 12 players, the ensuing chaos means it's hard for the game not to be fun. Each weapon available has a primary and secondary fire, and while your default shotgun and machine gun combo is as weak as a bullet made out of tissue, the rocket launcher and mortar pickup enables you to lay the smack down pretty nicely. Overall though, I found that the flamethrower was the best weapon for scoring some hefty kill combos, especially when surrounded by large numbers of enemy vehicles.
Now that's what I call burning rubber. With a simple design fault ruining an otherwise passable game, it's hard not to be annoyed by WAD. A quick patch to add extra configurations for your controls could turn this little game into a treat for PS3 owners, especially at its low price. But at the moment, the inexplicable lack of a decent control scheme makes it seem like a real wasted opportunity. And that thought is driving me crazy. 